Ever wondered what goodies you can find in the new Corona release? Stay tuned to find out. If you're new to our channel, I'm Tom, I'm a studio artist, and today I wanted to talk about some new cool features in Corona 8. So let's jump right into it. Let's check the new decal object. On uh, create one, you need to go to the create tab, uh, geometry, corona, and then pick C decal. It's a totally new object. Initially, it's going to appear as a bounding box. Um, and the main idea here is that we can apply any material and just project it into any surface in the scene. For instance, you can go with some simpler material, apply it to the decal object. Then you can toggle the bitmap preview on and off, similar as you would do with any other material. And now basically everything that's within the object's bounding box will have the decal material applied. The donut bitmap used in the material is projected everywhere from top to bottom. There are a few useful options here. You can change the masking, either taking the opacity from the applied material or from a custom map. You can control bump and displacement and toggle between the base and the maps from the decal material. Another pretty useful thing is that you can adjust the object size based on the material's bitmap. You can also control the depth limit of the decal or limit the angle to which is applied. So you can cover much more of the objects with the decal. And you can also blur the applied material and create a transition between uh, the original material and the decal. And one less useful feature here is that you can exclude the objects to which the decal is applied and basically control where it's appearing in the scene. Overall, I think decals might be useful uh, in applying road markings or any stickers or some dirt. It's pretty easy to use, so yeah, it will be quite a useful add-on to Corona. So the slicer tool, or actually the slicer material, it's basically if you wanted to slice everything up through your entire life, then I think that's the tool for you. So let's see how we can use it in any scene. Slicer is a new material type in Corona. You will find it along other materials in the material editor, and it's going to appear as a separate node in the Corona tab. And the main idea here is that you can apply the material to any object and by default it will just slice through everything in the scene. So let's try that with some simple scene setup. Uh, we're going to apply the slicer material to a box and as you can see it outright slicing through all the objects. You can also cap the slice or leave it just open. And one cool feature is that you can apply a custom material to the slice capping. And what's even better is that it's working pretty much flawlessly with complex shapes. You can control what slides and what not, and just exclude the objects from the material. And whatever is excluded in the material it will not going to be sliced. That's basically how we got this effect of slicing objects uh, with an animated blob. Right, so let's check the new UFW randomization mode. Um, it's available for Corona Multimap and Corona UVW randomizer nodes. Uh, here we've got an example with a Corona Multimap, which has a lot of loaded maps. So let's say you want to distribute all the maps on each particular polygon on these objects in the background. With all the previous modes, that wouldn't be actually possible. But now if you put it into polygon mode, you can see that each polygon is getting a totally random tile applied. And as previously, you can add some additional hue and gamma randomization, and it will just show the effect even better. You can do the same thing with the Corona UVW randomizer node and for instance distribute the same map randomly on each polygon. Here we've got that with some bump and displacement map uh, but it would probably work pretty well with some randomized roughness applied to each tile and it's going to like, create a totally random effect. I think it's still kind of lacking a lot of features from first pack so it's not gonna overtake um, its main competition but I think it's kind of going in the right direction. We might get like kind of a replacement for first pack in some day so let's see how we can use it. One major difference is that Chaos Scatter is now a separate tool so the first thing to do to get the new scatter available in 3ds Max would be to run the supplied installer. Then in 3ds Max you can get it from the geometry tab but you will need to look under Chaos this time and it's here under Chaos Scatter. It's created pretty much the same as previously, and as you can see it's also got the same icon, it's just got a different name. 
So let's get some object distributed on these servers to check all the new features. The first new thing is that now we've got support for include and exclude splines. If you pick a spline in the spline includes, it will limit the distribution. And the other way around with uh, splines added to spline exclude will remove objects from beneath the selected splines. Uh, but you can also change the protection since it doesn't have to always work uh, in the default Z axis. And now the distribution is going to follow the target even if it's animated. Uh, but one thing to consider is if you want to avoid having to random seed per frame, you'll need to tick the temporal consistency and then it will just freeze the distribution on the frame you pick and the whole animation is going to be totally consistent. Uh, now the other major feature, you can now distribute objects based on slope limitation. You can set the distribution to cover only a particular slope angle. Uh, it's obviously pretty useful for distributing plants in an environment. As you can see, it can be used in a lot of different ways. But I think one last major feature in the recent daily build is that you can use a surface color map. This one is available in a different menu uh, in the Chaos tab as Corona Scatter Surface Color. You can use it in the diffuse slot, just plug it into the distributed object's material, and you'll need to switch to use the custom bitmap to have that working. And you can also control hue and gamma randomization, which is going to apply to the whole distribution and each of the individual objects. Tail is more like a minor add-on to Corona's physical material, um, and it can just enhance your reflections. So let's see how we can use it um, in a scene. So tail is an additional parameter that you can find in the advanced options. Here you can see you've got the base tail value. Uh, it can go between 0 and 1. The general idea behind the tail parameter is that it will only blur reflections that are in the reflection peak. So generally those parts around the fringe of the object. Pretty much you won't see a lot of difference unless you bump the value up to something around 0.8 or if you mix it with any roughness value above 0. And here you can see like the comparison of how tail relates to roughness. Basically with the roughness you will get a totally smooth reflection. Uh, what's nice about the tail parameter is that you can get a really nice exact with sharp reflections outside of the reflection peak. And here you'll see the, the body of the glass will get a pretty smooth out reflection. Uh, while this convex detail, which is outside the reflection peak, will still get pretty sharp reflections. Alright, so cheers for getting till the end of the video. Um, if you found any of the features useful, just feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, and we'll be posting some new 3ds Max related content, so stay tuned!